I'll never forget what you done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. I won't forget how you brought me out. How can I forget? Oh, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget way down in Egypt land. How you brought me out with the mighty understand. Broke the crown of grace. Set me free. Gave me joy and peace and victory. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you broke me up? How can I forget? Oh, never, oh, never, never, for, never, never. Yeah. 
Just see me high. Joy is mine. Somebody say joy. 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 Come on and lift them up. 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 Somebody clap your hand. Somebody clap your hand. Somebody clap your hand. Somebody stomp your feet. Somebody stomp your feet. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come hey, to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I didn't come to look at you. I didn't come to well. look at you. the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For another day. Those hallelujah that have lost their minds and 
that don't even know who they are. Somebody walking around, Somebody. Lord, don't even know their Somebody. name, Lord. Somebody. But when we woke up this morning, yeah. we know who we were, Lord, because you woke us up again. Hallelujah. Oh, God, and we thank you, Lord, as we go into the service. We want you to help us, Lord. We want you to just be in our midst, and we just want to praise and thank you. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank the Lord, I thank the Lord, I thank the Lord. I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. For another day, another day, another day. For another day, another day, another day. For another day, for another day. Another day, another day, another day. Another day. Praise the Lord, saints. I'll be reading to you from Psalms 133, verses uh, 1 through 3. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the beard, on the head, that ran it down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to a skirt of his garment, as the dew of Hermon. And as a dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for the Lord commanded the blessings, even life forevermore. May the Lord have a blessing to hear and hear of his word. I get joy when I think about what he done for me. I get joy when I think about it. I get joy, joy. I get joy, joy. I get joy, joy. I get joy, joy. I get joy when I think about it. Yeah, I get joy when I think about it. Joy, joy. Joy, joy. Well, you can tell it, let me tell it. Oh, you can tell it. You can't tell it, let me tell it. Oh, you can't tell it, let me tell it. What he done for me? Oh, he saved my soul. What he done for me? Oh, he saved my soul. What he done for me? I put my name on the roll here. Yeah. What he done for me? Put my name on the roll. What he done for me? I put my name on the roll here. Yeah. What he done for me? Put my name on the roll. What is that for me? I can joy, joy. What is that for me? I can joy, joy. What is that for me? I can joy. Praise the Lord, saints. Come on, praise the Lord, saints. Come on, give God praise. Come on. I'll be reading Ephesians chapter 4. Two and six. With all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, and evering to keep the, un the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye caught in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, one and Father of all, 
who is above all and through all and and in you. The word of the Lord is blessed. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Till I
because we are celebrating Bishop Charles Norton and First Lady Cecilia Norton's anniversary. <laughs> Facebook viewers, you are appreciated for your dedication. Um, and next, if I can just um, utter words of sentiments to First Lady and Bishop. I can recall a time or several times that I've heard First Lady say, I, I had to cook dinner for my husband. And she said it unbothered. And she said it gracefully. I can also recall a time where there was conflict and Bishop intervened, and suddenly he said, I'm taking my wife home. Um, your lives confirm over and over again the scripture in Ephesians 5 and 33 where it says, each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself. And the wife must respect her husband. Congratulations on 42 years. And I hope you keep doing what you're doing because I depend on it. Thank you. Hey man, let's give her another hand. Now we're going to have our honorary tributes by Deacon Jesse Sanders. And uh, hold on, hold on, and Sister Goldie Hines. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I first would like to give thanks to the Lord for being able to be here this morning. And give thanks to the pastor and his wife for letting me be able to speak this morning on behalf of their goodness. First, I would like to Uh, thank the pastor and the first lady. Congratulate them on 42 years of service. <laughs> Both of them are good people. Both of them are living saved lives and are very good examples of how we should live our life. One thing about the pastor that I kind of like is he preaches the word and he tells it like it is. Never sugarcoated anything. And Sister Norton, very special lady. <laughs> She's very humble and a very self self spoken, soft spoken woman, but keeps it real. But also I would like to just thank you guys for being there for the time I've been here because I've learned a lot from you guys. And I love you both. And I'd just like to say congratulations. Amen. Amen. First, give it all to God to the pastor, his wife, thanks and friends. This ain't one of my things to be talking, but anyway, I will do it. I just want to say to the first lady, to the pastor, um, 
I don't know. I just, uh, I know what you're going through because of my parents. And um, first, I'm going to talk about the first lady, then I'm going to talk about the pastor. Well, I joined this church in 2016. And um, when I first came here, she's kind of laid back. She got to really feel you out first, you know, and check you out. Then, you know, she, uh, she asked for a solo here, there, there, and the other. So I heard her son say one Sunday they wasn't here. We were all in the parking lot. Me and Terry and all of us was in the parking lot. And he said, um, my mother, once she know you're going to be faithful and you coming, you know, then go, go, go. So I was talking to Gina one day, and Gina just kept saying, keep coming, Goldie, keep coming. And I said, I'm tired, I'm tired, because I was raised a different kind of way. But once I got in here and I got to learning how they do it, the Holy Ghost don't have no size. The Holy Ghost don't have no, you know, no different kind of person. We are who we are. We're going to be who we're going to be. So I looked at her, you know, and she's laid back. She's calm because my mother was a first lady. They take a lot. Y'all don't even know. Can't even imagine the things she takes. Can't even imagine the things she hear. But I found her to go through all of that. She's a phenomenal woman of God. And she calls me on the phone, you know, when I was sick. I was sick two, but two times since I've been here real bad. And she would call me, and she would say, well, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. She had no problem with praying. And prayer changes things. And I thank God for her. I thank God for that. I thank God for her humbleness. I thank God for her meekness. I thank God for her kindness. You know, and, and when I come in, she's like, ooh, Sister Goldie, I like that. I like, I like her because she likes to dress. So, you know, that's, that's one of my things right there. And another thing, I can say that she's a saved woman. I ain't here to call it. I don't know what she do, but I know what she do in front of me. She lives a life of being saved. And I thank and praise God for that on this morning. Well, now for the head man in charge. Y'all better give it up for Bishop. Woo! Yeah. That's my bishop right there. I love bishop. People say, go to, why you don't go to your brother church? Let me tell you something. I love my twin brother. Don't get me wrong. But he started at 915. I only got one eyelash on about 915. So I'm trying to make it here in time. So let me tell you something about Bishop. He remind me of my daddy. Baby, when he get to preaching and he get to grabbing that ear and ran back, I say, go ahead, Bishop. I just love to hear Bishop preach. Bishop is anointed. Bishop is saved. Bishop is filled. Bishop is a man of God. Bishop got a wife that's a help me. And see, you can't do this thing by yourself. I remember my daddy used to say, I need my wife. <laughs> Some of y'all better try to get your wife and get your husband. I hear Bishop say, many days, who want to be married? Who want to be have a husband? Who want to have a wife? Well, Bishop, I'm all right by myself, okay? Because I ain't got time to be doing all of this and doing that. So Bishop, but Bishop is teaching. I like Bishop because he's not teaching spiritual weakness in high places. Bishop is speaking straight from the King James Version, from the Word of God. And that's what's going to take to keep us. That's what's going to take to save us. For a man like Bishop, I like Bishop because I love Church of God in Christ. Let me tell you something about Church of God in Christ. A little girl. And my daddy started our church when I was six years old. I played the organ. And I remember one day I didn't want to play. My daddy said, let me tell you something. You can't join in this thing. You got to be born in. This is a Church of God in Christ. I listened to Bishop talk about the convocation. I listened to Bishop talk about how they got to go to San Diego, this and that and the other, him and his wife. My mother and father used to just travel. And it takes a village to pastor you people because we got different personalities. I know I'm a mess by itself. But I thank God for Bishop and his wife. They have accepted me like I am. 
I thank Bishop God and for his wife because, you know, we got a little praise going up in here, honey, because Holy Way be having some church. They asked me the other day, Goldie, what church do you go to? And I'm proud to say Holy Way Church of God in Christ, where the Holy Ghost lives and leads. And I thank God for my pastor and wife on this morning. I want you to have a blessed day, and I will continue to praise you and bless you in God's name. And I thank God, and God bless you. Amen. God, God bless you, Sister Goldie. Get, let's give her another hand. Amen. We're going to have a selection by Sister Terry at this time. And after that, I want everyone to stand on your feet and receive um, Ella Richardson as he comes to bring the word. Amen. Terry asked me to sing in her spot. I've had some good day. I've had some hills to climb. Uh -oh. I've had some weary day. Yeah. I some lonely nights but when I look around yeah think things over uh, 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 uh. Oh, all of my good days all of my, 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 my good days outweigh my bad days. I, I won't complain. Sometimes the cloud hang low. I can hardly see the road. But I ask the question, Lord. Lord, why so much pain? But God knows what's best for me. All of my Say thank you, Lord. Lift your hands and tell God, thank you, Lord. Clap your hands and say thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. Because God, 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 God. Ah! been good to me. Woo. Hey, 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 been good to me. Oh, more than this so well. You and you and you and you and you can ever be. He's been so good, been so good, been so good. Ah! Woo! To be your see how God dried all of my tears away. Turn my midnight into die. Get mad at the devil and tell God, thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah! I won't complain. Because God, God, God been good to me. Understood. Thank you, Lord. When your friends turn their back on you, thank you, Lord. When you can't see your way, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah! 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 I won't complain. Oh, oh, oh. I won't complain. I won't complain. I won't complain. Oh yeah, yeah. I won't complain. I won't complain. I won't complain. Cause God, God, woo, God. God, God, God been good to me. Woo. <laughs> he, yeah, 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 yeah. He, yeah, 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 yeah. Been good to me. Oh, yeah. More than this whole world. Are you? You? You can have a bee. It's been so good. Been so good. Been so good. Ah! To me, y'all see here. Dried all of my tears away. Midnight in today. All I can do is say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. I won't complain. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Father, I won't complain. I won't complain, Lord. You have blessed me going in and coming out. Lord, you have touched me. So, Lord, have your way in this place today, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. I promise you I won't complain, Lord. Lord, we give you all the blessings and the praise. Lord, have your way in this place, Lord. Let your spirit be felt in this place. Let your anointing flow through your people, Lord. Send healing and deliverance right now, Lord. Lord, have your way in this place. Have your way, Lord. Lord, you're here right now, Lord. And we thank you right now, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. You are my strength and my redeemer. The Bible says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. For if he redeemed you out of anything, you need to give him some praise. We need to just praise him. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I give honor to God and to Bishop. You may have a seat. To Bishop Naughton and First Lady on this day. 42 years is a long time. It's a very long time to be in ministry. And I thank God for them. These last five years has been awesome being under the ministry. And I thank God for their lives. Let's give them a hand, please. I thank God for these people because they do so much. And when you see your pastor being elevated, I, I get up and say he's my pastor and bishop, but he's constantly being elevated. The Lord is not through with him yet. It's not through with him yet. And I thank God for their lives. First lady, she awesome because she's humble and sweet to everybody. But she really humble and sweet to Bishop. Wait, but Bishop. <laughs> and I thank God for their lives. I give an honor to everybody else. Uh, Elder Alton, I mean, Elder Hope and Elise and the mothers and you saints out there. Um, I'm excited to see my buddy here. He's the, he's the responsible for my clothes. This, this is the guy right here that... that well, he's my buddy. When I go downtown, we always have conversation. I buy clothes for me. And I thank God for him to come today. He didn't know I was going to be speaking, but he knew Bishop's anniversary was today. Amen. Amen. I thank God for my wife being here today. Amen. Amen. I'm going to get right into it today. Years ago, when first start preaching, I was really ready to go on fire, and God gave me this message, and, and I took the message to the people, the, the, the people that was over at the church, and they said, you sure you want to preach that? We talking about this is 25 years ago, and they said, you sure you want to do this? <laughs> So I got to study in the message. They, they say, you're not ready. They, you weren't ready. And for some reason, when Bishop let me know, he asked me to preach, I, I, I didn't go here. But if you seek the Lord and he leads you and guides you, he'll let you know what he wants you to talk about. So, originally, in my head, I already had a message prepared and ready to go. So, as I began to study that message, I dropped this message in my heart, not knowing the theme. 
So we're going to go to Romans 8 and 5. 8, 5. And I, I struggled with it. I didn't quite know if I was ready for it, but obviously God was ready for you to hear it. Because somebody needs it. I was at a point where even writing this message, I walked away from it about three times. But God says, no, you're going right back here. Romans 8 and 5. For they that are after the flesh do not mind the things of the flesh, but they that's after the spirit, the things after the spirit. For the carnal minded is dead, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is in intimacy against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that spirit of God dwells in you not in any man have not the spirit of Christ is none of his. Can't belong to Christ being his. And if Christ be in you, let the body is dead because of sin. The spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised, raised you up from Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raises up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. That, that was quite interesting. But it has a whole lot of meaning to it if we look into it because we all come to church and we all come to worship God but Things happen. I want to start off, I want to talk about Paul a little bit. Paul wrote this book. Paul wrote 1 Corinthians. Paul wrote Philippians. But he wrote this book. Paul wrote this letter to introduce himself to the church in Rome. By the time in his life, he, he had been preaching, it had been 20 years when he wrote this book. And it was based on two things. First, he was grateful for the salvation and whatever God sent him, he sent him to talk about Jesus Christ. The second, his heart desire was to do the will of God. And we, we often talk about the will of God. And what is the will of God? Some of us don't know what the will of God is, and some of us do. But I'm here to tell you today, I want to talk about being spiritually minded. Spiritually minded. It takes a while for us to become spiritually minded. It just don't pop on you like that, or just don't come in like that. It's a process. He says, to know what God expects, how the believer should live. The believer should have, there, sh there should be two natural con confusion there. It's two natural things. It's a believer and there's a non-believer. There's a carnal mind and there's the saint, I mean the spirit. There's sin and there's spirit. So Paul is trying to relay this message about how we should live our lives as believers. 
He says, by identifying which aspect the behavior results from the Holy Spirit life and the results of fleshly activity. I want to talk about fleshly activity and I want to talk about mindly, spiritually minded. Because to be spiritually minded, we could come to church and live holy all the time, but don't mean we spiritually minded. Sometimes it takes us a while to get it, but we get it. I've been in the church of, I've been in the church for the like last 25 years, and God has grown me from the back row to the front. And I thank God for that experience. I thank God for him blessing me and touching me and leading me and guiding me. He says, once we understand the difference, we can navigate our new life with wisdom and understanding. The nature of sinful flesh, the nature of that rejects God. There's people out there that don't like to hear the word, don't like coming to church, don't like us, because we come to church. The churches need to be filled, so when COVID-19 hit, that was a more of an excuse not to come to church. Amen. 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 But being spiritually minded, it doesn't matter, because we are here. Right. We're here because we're spiritually minded. And we've grown to the point to where no matter what happens, we believe God is going to do what he said he's going to do. Therefore, if any judgment we incur self indulge because we have chosen to reject God and his word. And I'm thinking, who, who can reject God and his word? But when they took out, took the cross off the city sign years ago, I says, they're rejecting This, we're talking about the city. We're talking about thousands of people with this emblem. They take it off. So they don't want to hear about with God and don't, don't want to be spiritual. They, they, they just want to go on and, and totally disrespect churches. You know, even the devil now is coming up, and I've heard people getting shot in the church, in the Catholic church. But I thank God that he has given us the power, given us a spiritual mind. In Romans 8 and 7, it says, because the carnal mind is eminently against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So we, we, we're, we, I just want to revey the carnal-minded, how they think, what they do. Because there's thousands and millions of people that is not don't believe in God, don't believe that there is a God, and if there is a God, it has no power. It has no meaning to them. He said that you, the Bible says to reject God. If we know the story of Christ and what he went through on the cross, to see that is a, I was a young man, a little boy, but to see that as a little boy is to say, people are really like that. People are really crucifying this man like this. He got to carry the cross, and he got these stories in his head. But as I begin to get older, yes, it's reality. Because I've seen sinners abuse each other, and it looks about the same. It says in verse Romans 8 and 8, it says, So then that, that are in the flesh cannot please God. Those people cannot please God. But if we live in the flesh and be, be blasphemy against God, we cannot move forward. But you have some of the most richest people that don't believe God. But I guarantee you, it's somewhere in their life they're not happy. There is something going on. It's discomfort. They have all the money in the world, but it's, I guarantee you, they live and die just like we do. 
Not to say that we're not rich, but they still got consequences they have to pay because of their sin. Any, dis any hostile or disobedient legacy to the word of God, word comes out of flesh, fleshly nature. So this thing, flesh, let's look at it. Flesh is a lot of things. Flesh, you can hurt people, flesh. Hurt their mind, their heart, tear them down. The devil is always out to destroy you. The devil is always finding ways to stop you from serving God. It takes, it takes power. Amen. The flesh is always shouting, feed me, feed me. Every day. What, how can I make your day miserable? Let me, let me flatten your tire on the freeway and you have no way to get it fixed. Let me stop you from making money so you can pay your rent. He says, feed me. You stepped on my foot and you're ready to beat somebody up. It's Satan. The mind to want to go and rob and kill somebody is Satan. To want to kill and corrupt the school, the school system is Satan. People are so dysfunctional in the flesh is Satan. And if he can keep you down, he will. The Bible says over in uh, John 10, it says he's out to kill, steal, and destroy. But God said he come to give life. In life more abundantly. It says people are angry. Lust, strife, jealousy, gossip, moodiness, and so on. But the thing that disturbs me the most is that it's in the church. It's among us believers. Jealousy. Where you want to sit. Jealousy, who looking at who? Gossip. First thing you do when you get home, you gossip. You gossip about who did what. You're at church, you're sitting, you're thinking lustfulness. That's not of God. God and jealousy, it should, we should always, as believers, be humble to whatever it is. We shouldn't have to be jealous on anything if we got the spirit of God in our life, or in our mind, in our heart. We have to grow from that. Now, I'm going to expect everybody just to drop off, and just do this, but it takes time. Because we under God's tutelage. Amen. The, the other behavior is other spirit. God has given us all we need in order to Realize that God is our creator. <laughs> After going to ministry school, there were guys in the class asking, what happened before Adam and Eve? Who was here? And Pastor, I don't know if he's a bishop, Bishop Stovall. He says that was the beginning. When nothing, when this, nothing was here but the word. But the word, God put the word here before he put anything here. He created the word and he spoke it into existence. So it's no wavering one way or the other on who was here before God put stuff here. And he put man here first. So him creating us, he created us. He formed us. So he's very powerful. He says, how can we choose to live our lives impacting Christian, being Christians and witnessing to others? 
I hope the bottom line is we're here to witness. We come to church to let other folk know about Jesus Christ. That's the bottom line is. Whether we out in the street, whether we at home, if you're going to gossip, gossip about Jesus. He came here to, to, to make things easy. He came here for peace, harmony, to love him because he is love. And if you're not loving on folk, you ain't doing what he should put, what you should be doing. You stuck, you stuck on that carnal mindness. We should be spiritually minded. He says, if we live in the spirit, being honored and glory to God, it gives us his will and his promise. It helps us to understand what he's all about and his power. Amen. Amen. If we are walking in the spirit and not in the flesh, we will recognize that we must walk in love. I, I hear it over in Galatians about the fruits of the spirit. And as long as I've known People, I've been in church many years. I started out as an urcher and I became an adjutant and I traveled. And I've seen many people not exercise the fruits of the spirit. Now, I could yell and holler and try to get it in you. But the fruits of the spirit is the key. To a godly life, spiritual minded, how you treat people, love, patience, peace, kindness, long suffering. Even though you want to do, you still have to do it to help us. We need, we can, we have to help each other. God wants us to help each other. Bishop, been here forty-two years. 42 years, 42 years, he's helped a lot of people. First leg, they put up with people's stuff. That's godliness. That's spiritual mindset. They didn't get here by just doing flotty stuff. But look, they're here. That's because they have a mindset to serve the Lord. And it's been for 42 years. <laughs> Hallelujah. The secret to overcoming Christian's life is to keep your mind on the things of the spirit. Now, this is the tricky part. Keeping your mind on the spirit. Not keeping your mind on the spirit when you're in the church. Uh oh. Well, how you know? How you know this, Ella Richardson? How you know? Because I used to sit up in church and think about what I'm going to do when I get out. And, and if they were trying to hurry up and see and get to that basketball game, I need to watch it on TV. I'm going to meet with my buddies. And I'm sitting in church thinking about this stuff. My mind ain't nowhere near on what the preacher trying to say. I'm just trying to get out. But we must be spiritually minded. And when I say that, it's before I even get to church. I, I don't watch news. I don't want to do nothing before I even get to church. And then after I get to church and get a word, then I ponder on that word. I, I, I just saying this because God, needs, God wants somebody to hear this. Where your mind should be. Because if it's not on the Lord, then it's not in the right place. I hate to say that, but it's not. It's like you're spiritually minded. Spiritually minded could prosper you. I can I could name some scriptures about uh, over in one one hundred one or one, scripture one, um, uh, Psalms one. Blessed is the man, and he'll make you prosper. But, but the thing of it is, and it says, 
Uh, this book of the law should not depart from out of your mouth, but meditate it on it day and night. What does that mean? It took me a while to get it. But when I start reading the word of God, things begin to change in my life. Things begin to move in my life. But the protection from the Lord came. And I began to read more and more. And he started doing more and more things for me. I took the foolishness off my mind. I became spiritually minded. And when you become spiritually minded, God will move in your favor. He will move in your favor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He says there's an inner conflict with rage on until the believer chooses to render his will to Jesus Christ. To surrender his, it's a, it's a struggle. The struggle. It's this stuff you don't hear, but it's a struggle. I've been in settings where people was glued to that seat. It would not surrender themselves to the Lord. When the Lord is trying to pull them about the seat, the devil is pushing them down. Can't move. And then after you keep coming, that, that the, the, the Holy Ghost to get in there and that plate, the Holy Ghost is in there. Pretty soon you're going to get up and walk down to that altar. That's when things begin to change. That's where the pressure is, is, is been pressure, but God didn't move the pressure out the way. Then move the conflict out the way. You're not trying to figure out where you're going. You're not trying to figure out what you're going to do. You're not figuring about your friends and how they are. He says when the Spirit of God move in, in a setting that he's moving in, he's going to cause you to move. There's no way I can sit in church and not move. The Spirit will move you when you don't want to move. The Spirit will take you where you think you might want to go, but you, you, he's going to take you where you need to go. He's going to put the right people around you. And most of the time, those people that are spiritual minded will, will comfort you. You'll see the love of God in their hearts. You'll see the love of God moving to and for, for your favor. Allowing God to establish the rules in all areas of your life. There's no mistake when you watch Facebook and you see all these churches lined up and they're preaching and they're shouting. It's a reason. Because some people are affected. Some people get something. But when you're spiritually minded, you will find a way to make your way to church. You will find a way to see what, why they're doing what they're doing. You will find a way to move by his spirit. He'll move you when you don't want to move. He'll take you where you don't want to go. You should be a light of the world. You should let your light shine among your people. No matter where you go, you're not going to go. Everywhere you go, you're not going to see Christians. But I guarantee you, when you walk up and know the people look at you, they should see the Spirit of God upon you. They should speak to God, the Spirit of God. We cannot allow the pressure of the world to bear down on you. And to compete because it caused pressure. It'll cause you not to move. It'll call, unless you call on the name of Jesus. Then you'll start listening to your mom. You'll start listening to the pastor. You'll begin to take right counseling. You realize that you don't know it all. But God has another plan for you in your life. God wants you to be spiritually minded. He wants you to be spiritually fed. He wants you to be spiritually walking in the Christ, walking in him, walking in the light. So we celebrated the, uh, uh, Jesus Christ being raised from the stone, and it brought life. But from that point on, we should be spiritually minded on how we act and what we do and where we act. God wants to use us in a special way because we are special. He says we are peculiar people. Called by his name. He says, in order to stay spiritually minded, 
He says, faith. He says, faith. We must have faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is, is faith. You believe it's in the word of God, then he'll take that, he'll take you listening to the word of God, and he will move you to another level in the word. It says to be spiritually minded is the way of life. To be righteous is the way of life. You live a righteous life. It's possible. Some people in the world might talk about you because you live a righteous life. You believe in going to church. You believe in what the word say. You honor what God say. It was a gift when Jesus left here. It was a gift that he left with us. He gave us the right to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, I will praise you. Lord, I will glorify you. I will magnify you. Lord, I thank you. He says, the Bible says, I will beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. That is your reasonable service. If we're coming and we're worshiping, we should be living sacrifice for God. So I want to encourage Bishop Naughton and First Lady. The Bible says... In Isaiah 43 and 19, it says, I behold a new thing. God is going to do a new thing in your lives. After 42 years, he's going to bless you and keep you. It says we all should be, be spiritually minded, be put, lifted up, because God wants to lift us up and move us to another level. When you give you new life, new things, how can God change you? How can God move you? How can God... Move you from one point to the other. I, I, I was believing that God said, Lord, you're going to take me over here. But the Lord said, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do a new thing in your life. And he has changed me all the way around. That's because I believe in my mind is spiritually minded. He keep me in a place of happiness. He keep me in a place of peace. He keep me in a place of glory. He keep me in a place of the spirit. Because the spirit lies on me. The Spirit is on me all the time, and I can't help it. I went to school a year ago, two years ago, to drive trucks. But believe it or not, he had another plan. I don't never have to drive another truck in my life because God had a plan for me in my life, ever. I don't have to worry about it. If that's my choice, I want to do. But I thank God because I said I said I made a vow to him. If you do this, I'm gonna do that, and you have to carry me through it. And he made provisions. He made provisions. We we talking about right now. Hallelujah. I I want to. Pray for some people. And, and, and I want you to, if you're spiritually minded and you need to grow, or you're confused, or you got conflict in the world and spirits, because we can come to church and try to balance. Could you stand, please, everybody? You know in your heart what your situation and condition is. But to be spiritually minded is to clear your mind from all the mess. If you want God to do something for you, we all have our needs. We all believers. We all love the Lord. We all nice and kind. But there's still something that God wants from you. So I want to pray. Sit right where you are. And I'm going to pray. And when I pray, I want you to believe in your mind that God is doing what you ask him to do. But it got to be in his will. It got to be in his will. It can't be out of his will. If it's in his will... He will take you 
where you need to be for his will and his glory. Amen. Father God, I bless and I praise you because you're here right now. And Father, we have your people standing before you right now. We have people that's listening in the Facebook right now. Lord, I lift them up to you. Lord, you know what they need. You know the spiritual mindness of what they need to be at. Only you can measure that. But Lord, I'm asking you right now, I decree and declare that Lord, you will lift them up. Lord, move them to different new levels. Change your life in a spiritual way, Lord. Let them know who you are. Let them feel your power and your glory. Let them renew their mind and their strength, Lord. For, Lord, you have set the tone, Lord. So, Lord, right now, Lord, whatever they're asking for in your name, your will, let it be done. Let it be done, Lord. Let it be done, Lord. Let it be done, Lord. Let's give God some praise. Let's praise him. Let's give him some praise. Let's give him some praise. Just a little more faith. I thank God for you today, and I thank you for being here. I hope someone was helped, and I hope someone got this word. In the, in, uh, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. We need faith, 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 a little more faith. Oh, faith, 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 just a little more faith. Faith, 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 a little more faith. It don't take a whole lot. Use what you got. A little more faith. Faith. More faith. A little more faith. It don't take a whole lot. Use what you got. Faith. 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 A little more faith. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Man, I enjoyed that word. It's a great message. One, one, of my, one of my favorite books, eight chapter Romans. Amen. So, so, so you, so you, so, so you, so, so you, so you roam, you roam it up today, Ella Ritson. God bless you. Well, we praise God. Just thank God, amen. I'm just so happy today for seeing everybody. Thank God for traveling grace this morning. Wasn't feeling 100%, but God brought me here anyway. All right. Sister Rucker, God bless you. Got, got, got your blue on. Amen. And, uh, I know, I know you. I need, I need, I need to come down there and get a suit. All right, okay. Well, look, we praise God, Amen. We're getting ready to receive our offering at this time, Amen. So I just thank God. It's good to be here on today, and uh, all these tributes to the pastor and first lady. I've been, I've been knowing them a long time. And it look, looks like um, I'm not on program to get on tribute or nothing like that. So I, so I, I give it now while we're getting ready to get the offering. Been on you a long, long time. And one thing what I thank God for is uh, you have not changed. You've been the same. And I identify Sister Dalton as the one that know what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. Can't say it about everybody. And of course, the bishop, special friend of mine, 
led me to the Lord, suitcase packed, backpack packed too, going on my way to hell. But he ministered to me and hey, so here I am now. 40, 40 some odd years, more, more than 42 years. But okay, here we are. So now we're going we're gonna to receive our offering this time now. going to ask that you come.